Hakuga is an indie walking simulator released sometime in late 2022 by itch.io user Anxiety. The initial release page claims that Hakuga was released on behalf of Alex V, the original game dev that ended his life in 2017. The original text is as follows. In honor of Alex V, 1999 to 2017. Hakuga is a game that was being worked on by one of my very close friend. This friend ended his life in 2017 and left the game unfinished. His parent gave me some of his possession, including his computer. On it was the Unity project of Hakuga. My friend passed a lot of time working on this game, more than seven years in fact. The game was supposed to be released in 2020 as multiple files stated. I didn't wanted all of his hard work to have been in vain, so I did my best to make this game playable. The Unity project was riddled with a lot of error and not functioning system, more than 35 critical error. Fixing it wasn't easy as it was my first time ever using Unity 3D. The game was made on an old and unstable version of Unity that was pirated. I did my best to port the project over to a more recent and stable Unity version using the personal use license. My friend never clearly explained what the story is, nor he explained what the goal of the game was. I have my own interpretation as well as some hint that my friend left in the doc files, but I believe it's best to let player interpret the game's story. He had a lot of mental issues, and was diagnosed with schizophrenia, PTSD, depersonalization, and major depression, some of them caused by a very heavy use of LSD. So the meta story is that the game is an open viewport on the mind of a really troubled person. Explore this virtual world built by a disturbed mind. Please remain respectful if you decide to comment. Whatever you think about the game, keep in mind that it was made by someone very mentally ill and now deceased, so in respect of his memory, I will ask everyone to remain civil and respectful. Okay, so on the surface, this reads as baby's first creepypasta. A disturbed young protagonist, Alex would have been 18 at the time of his death, goes insane and dies, leaving behind an abandoned computer with cursed files. We've seen this sloppy kind of writing a thousand times before. Hell, the math on OP's claim that Alex worked on Hakuga for over seven years implies that the project started when he was like 10 or 11 years old. But let's pretend that this story is real and dig into the game. When brightened, the itch.io banner reveals a patent for a gun in the bottom left corner, probably the one Alex used to take his own life. Very spooky. In Japanese, the word Hakuga roughly means scholarship or extensive knowledge. On an initial boot of the game, a spooky anime girl and some Japanese text reading Ryoko o Tanoshimu appear on screen. This, along with the ESL writing from both the warning screen and itch.io page, gives me the impression that the developer wants us to believe that he and his friend are Japanese to some extent. This font family is a dead giveaway for weeb shit though, as it's difficult to read for someone that could recognize Roman characters in kana. Weeb shit aside, the game is incredibly stylish. Hakuga is more of an art exhibit than a game with an objective goal to achieve. Entering different doors takes the players to different maps. The visuals are constantly changing, with seppuku methods and borrowed Manhunt 2 graphics glitching on screen. One of Hakuga's maps is a black and white spiraling hallway framed by two photos, one from the human trophy collecting Wikipedia article, and another of a Japanese soldier's head hanging from a tree, which I've obviously censored here. While you're trying to interpret the scene, various cute anime girl renders pop up to distract you. Walking further leads the player to a part of the game that was allegedly removed for legal purposes. We'll add that to the list of creepypasta cliches. The next map is a stylish, post-apocalyptic city that's overseen by an omnipresent anime girl. Poking around the doors of this map leads to some interesting secrets. It's during the Museum of Shame area where the player can find photos of Imperial Japan, a regime active from the mid-1800s to 1947. During this time, Japan was responsible for what has been described as the Asian Holocaust during the occupation of China, Korea, the Philippines, and other countries in Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands. This affected up to 463 million people. The museum also features photos related to Panawave, a whimsical little doomsday cult that traveled rural Japan in search of a site that was the least populated by electromagnetic waves. They were ultimately harmless, with their biggest crime being the failed capture of Tama-chan, an arctic seal living in the Tama River at the time. They believed him to have been led astray by Dempa waves, and doomsday would be averted if he was returned to the Arctic. Pro-vegetarian texts lining the city floors are likely in reference to Pana Wave. 
A not-so-harmless case referenced in the Museum of Shame is Al Machine di Kyo. Now known as Aleph, this doomsday cult was responsible for a series of crimes, the most notable being the 1994 murder of pharmacist Ochina Kotoro and two sarin gas attacks in 1994 and 1995. The most egregious case featured in Hakuga is found in the Seven Doors map. A screaming raccoon spider thing is framed by four pictures of Ishi Shiro, a Japanese war criminal who was the director of Unit 731, a biochemical warfare research unit responsible for the torture and death of up to 300,000 people. This reference stands out in particular because the Seven Doors level is a collection of unique sensory experiences, with this section being the only one in reference to a Japanese crime. A computer in the desert level shows a pixelated graphic of a flag belonging to Minzok no Ishidome, a conservative political party that paradoxically advocates for wealth distribution and free health care. The calm blue ocean map features a girl sitting on a car in a vaporwave landscape. She tells the player, in broken English, that we're safe and that previous players were too freaked out to continue. Almost like we were in a video game and I was talking to the guy playing. We explore a few more maps and a seemingly unrelated abandoned house as this little creature, and that's basically the end of the Hakuga experience. What appears to be an edgy art project on the surface may actually be a subtle critique on the ways in which we, as Westerners, engage with Japanese content. A bulk of the historical images used in Hakuga are in reference to Unit 731, something that I was initially shocked to learn about as an American who wasn't taught about it in public school. Although this example is purely anecdotal, it reminds me of the idea that the Japanese government attempted to rebrand itself as a soft political power following the damage done to its reputation in World War II. This idea is nothing new. Political scientists and the average Twitter leftist have discussed the rebranding of post-World War II Japan for years now. In the context of politics, soft power is the act of shaping others' preferences through appeal and attraction. It's one thing to win people over by publicly apologizing for wartime comfort women, but it's another to naturally draw people in with cute things and engaging media. And before you get all worked up, anime existed before World War II and your favorite mangaka probably doesn't have blood on their hands. Obviously, not every cute mascot is a front for history erasure. But what does Hakuga have to say about all this? The black and white map encourages the player to pursue a door with a cutesy face on it. As mentioned before, an uncensored photo of a beheaded soldier and a photo of a different soldier holding a human skull frame the map. A render of an anime girl occasionally pops up on screen to distract the player. The symbolism here is obvious to me. Don't worry about that old nasty stuff. Chase after that cute door and watch VTubers or something. <laughs> the Tokyo map is overseen by a giant anime girl. Images of Unit 731 victims are highly filtered and difficult to recognize. A sprite of Am Shinrikyo's leader is hidden in an alley. Relics of Japanese war history, such as a tank and a kabuto helmet, are buried in what I interpret to be the sands of time in the desert map. There are surveillance cameras everywhere, and when we glance up to the sky to look at the anime girl there, we're prompted with, the eye above is judging you as if we're investigating something we aren't supposed to. We only see the flag of Minzok no Isidome after we get on the computer and seemingly do our own research. The Shichigo map is littered with speakers, TVs, and anime girls. Interestingly, one of the only legible graphics in this level is a list of Hiroshima and Nagasaki death stats. This places emphasis on Japan being a victim rather than a perpetrator. The final hallway leads the player to a room filled with screens and speakers. The player is surrounded by media. There isn't any historical imagery here, which leads me to believe that this represents a successful rebrand. What really sells me on the idea that this is a critique on weeb culture specifically is the use of nonsensical Japanese in nearly every map. Anyone with an interest in anime has seen Google Translate Japanese in the wild. And honestly, it got me. My first impression of Hakuga was that it was genuine, authentic weeb shit. But after engaging critically with the game, I grew fond of some of the weeby assets like the hiragana monster, the papi pupepo cat, and more. I noticed the immense amount of work that went into Hakuga while I was digging through its assets. Most of the art was original, while borrowed assets were crafted into something transformative by the dev. Files of historical images were properly labeled, and that led me to research events I wasn't familiar with. I understand that data mining isn't typically part of the gaming experience, but it furthered my appreciation for Hakuga. While we're on the subject of game assets, there's something important that I need to address. 
Hakuga unfortunately uses a few real-life photos of the deceased as assets. No amount of pretentious writing is needed to explain that disseminating photos of the dead for shock value is disrespectful, especially if their death is the result of a crime. Thankfully, these photos go unnoticed in-game because they are heavily filtered and distorted, but it was a huge shock to see them completely uncensored in Asset Studio. Please don't do this. This next section is a doozy. Keeping up with the story in real time has been difficult due to the constant revision and deletion of updates online. To recap, the original itch.io page claims that Hakuga was created by Alex B, a disturbed 18-year-old who killed himself in 2017. The uploader of the game is a friend of his that inherited his computer. The friend knew how much Hakuga meant to Alex and, despite having never touched the Unity engine before, fixed all the bugs in the game and uploaded it to itch. This person also promoted the game with a post to r slash horror gaming using the same story. An excerpt from the itch page reads, Please remain respectful if you decide to comment. Whatever you think about the game, keep in mind that it was made by someone very mentally ill and now deceased, so in respect of his memory, I will ask everyone to remain civil and respectful. I don't even have to point out how ironic this is. Despite Alex's alleged death in 2017, an in-game memorial exists for Akiba Tomoke, who lived from 1999 to 2020. This makes him 21 at the time of his death versus Alex's 18. Obviously, this is a standard, edgy ARG plot hole, but it's further debunked by a file dating back to 2021, four years after the creator allegedly passed away. It wouldn't make sense for Alex's friend to have put it there since he said he wanted to publish Hakuga in his original state. While data mining, Tumblr user Perfect Tenth found an original SoundCloud upload matching the name of an audio file. While investigating the SoundCloud account, Perfect Tenth noticed the artistic similarities between the SoundCloud album covers and Hakuga assets. A lot of the writing in Hakuga files are in English or French. Noticeable quirks of said writing include the syntax being typical for a native French speaker, the spaces before exclamation and question marks, and the lowercase markings for first-person eyes. After this info came to light, a post from Reddit user Akiba Gaijin popped up and claimed to be the alleged Alex V or Akiba Tomoke. I'm the developer of Hakuga, AMA. Hello, my name is Akiba, developer of the ARG video game Hakuga. I created this game as a kind of art project with ARG's story in mind, but I got busy with university and over time, I gradually lost motivation and stopped working on it. Since there are no further developments regarding Hakuga, I have decided to answer everyone's questions. Please ask me anything. There's a chance that this post is fake, but the account uses the name Akiba, which was only used in-game, and OP's profile picture is a slightly altered version of an image from the assets. Reddit user STFU Liar commented on this post. This dude is a liar. He don't know anything about the game. Alex uploaded the game before putting an end to his life. I suppose you can make your own opinion about what persuaded him. The suicide story, while being slightly modified compared to what really happened, was about himself. He wrote all of that. I have my own idea as to why he did, but that none of your business. The photo are used in the Museum of Shame and Unit 731 is all about denouncing and not forgetting what happened. I did some of the art, Alex did most of them. No. Here's some questions because you're nothing but a pathetic liar. How do you feel about making yourself pass as the creator of a game that was partially created by a suicide victim? How do you feel after lying about the explanation concerning why the game got dropped? Alex killed himself, you utterly stupid thing. I wish he had to quit the game because of university. Do you intend to delete this post, or do you intend to continue messing with someone in which you clearly have nothing to do, and have no idea what it is? What are you gaining from these lies? Seriously? Do you just enjoy messing with other people's stuff? Do you just enjoy knowing you fucked me up even more than I was before? Are you aware that your profile picture is literally me and him? How do you feel about that? Uh? STFU Liar has since deleted the comment and the account. The itch.io page received several updates during this time. This individual is lying, I can easily prove it. I did not upload this archive. Furthermore, the game version is incorrect. Whoever you are, by the way, I hope you realize how much of a fuck you made by uploading this. I'm really disappointed and pissed off. I feel compelled to share the base game, because if I don't, this nonsense will just become worse. The game's background is too intricate and difficult to discuss in casual conversation, and I really don't want to talk about it. Alex and I collaborated on this game. It was his initial itch.io upload. All you have to know was that. The game was erased by me for good reason. I assumed it would remain the way it was. Hakunga is not an ARG. There is nothing related to the game online, 
There is no cryptic message in or out of the game, and there is neither a solution nor an ending to the game. In the event that anybody is attempting to involve the game in any capacity, it's phony. There isn't anything connected with Hakunga other than the base game. Have no faith in anybody aside from this itch.io account when it comes to anything related to Hakunga. The SoundCloud account was deleted, but Hakuga Z on Twitter, created in 2018, after Alex V's alleged death in 2017, is still up. While all of this was going down, an upload of the game on archive.org received several comments from user Super Saiyan 12. December 1st, 2023. Can you please delete this archive? I'm asking kindly. Will you delete it, please? Also, I flagged it as contained graphic violence. December 2nd, 2023. Delete this, please, delete this, please, delete this, please, delete this, please. December 2nd, 2023. I require that you delete this archive. Many thanks. A final statement has been made on itch. This game was a collaborative work among several artists. Following a disagreement, one of them did something inappropriate and unplanned by choosing to independently release the game with unintended modifications, nothing more. It turned into a huge clusterfuck mess that only causes problems. There is no need for a witch hunt, as the person responsible for all of this has since ceased all involvement in game development. He deeply regrets his actions and is fully cognizant of the consequences. Those currently affected by the situation are only artists and content creator who had no part in the unplanned release of the game. We believed we had to put an end to the project when, after being asked to, he removed the game from itch.io a few months ago, shortly after the unplanned release. The intention was never to release the game. It was meant to be something akin to Petscop. A potential release was considered, but certainly not in this state. However, someone uploaded it again without our consent to archive.org, and unfortunately, it ended up being featured in a video by a popular YouTuber. This archive.org re-upload is the primary cause of the current situation. Nobody died, nobody killed himself, or other bullshit among those, just one person who fucked up real bad, trying to claim the project as his own. None of this was supposed to be in the project. Any previous statement were written by this person as a pathetic attempt to do some damage control until we got aware of what was happening. This person no longer has access to the itch.io page and has been banned from virtually every platform we could enforce. Evidently, the compromise of our project was not sufficient. To exacerbate the situation, you had to engage in harassment and doxing. Please cease all instances of harassment and doxing. You are harming people that have nothing to do with the initial release. For some of them, it has even impacted their primary source of income. The situation is more dire than it appears. None of us deserve this. The post goes on to just repeat itself. So, this is a lot to process. Here's my personal interpretation of events. Hakunga is a one-man art project that was launched with poorly planned ARG elements. Alex may have been insecure about his work, which is why he lied about its backstory and asked people to be polite in the reviews of the game. People pointed out the sloppy ARG writing but overall enjoyed the game. Fans found his SoundCloud and professional art account on Instagram. Seeing that his digital footprint was revealed and reception of the game was positive, Alex conceded and posted an AMA on Reddit. Just as Hakunga was picking up steam, Data miners found gore in the game's assets and rightfully criticized him for disrespecting the dead. Alex panicked and created a new Reddit account, STFU Liar, to deflect and defend himself. He deleted Hakunga from itch and begged for its deletion from archive.org. He then released a series of frantic updates to itch where he doubled down on the story of his own death and denied any ARG elements. During this time, a second version of Hakunga was released on itch and subsequently deleted. Finally, one last statement was posted where Alex claims that Hakunga was a collaborative work that was released with gore and an edgy suicide story by a disgruntled former team member. It's important to note that this statement is written in a style that is polished but still noticeably belonging to Alex. He claims that the Hakunga drama is hurting his income as an artist and he calls for all instances of harassment and doxing to stop. Doxing and harassment is bad, obviously, but I suspect that this, along with claims that Hakunga was a sabotage team project, it's just not true. At the time of writing this, the Hakunga subreddit has a whopping 13 members, myself included. Perfect Tense Tumblr post has eight notes. A YouTube video that Alex worked on has a single comment referencing the game, and it's not even negative. Despite this, Alex continually claimed that he was being spammed and doxxed on his Instagram, which went through a couple name and bio changes. It was private for a bit, but it's back up now. All this frantic posting, deleting, and backtracking honestly makes Alex come off as an insecure weenie. In my opinion, 
You can't be an internet tough guy that puts gore into his games if you're going to hide from criticism about it. Hakuga has a cool concept. I enjoyed the visuals, the anti-war sentiment, and the critique of modern media consumption. I'm sure there are a lot of in-game details that I missed, and my interpretation of it is probably far-fetched, pseudo-intellectual bullshit, but stitching something together from Hakuga's ambiguity is part of the fun. It was difficult to tell at times what I was looking at because of all the flashing lights and filter overlays, but aside from that, Hakunga was a memorable and engaging sensory experience that I would recommend. Alex, if you're watching this, I believe you to be an incredibly talented artist. You don't need a spooky backstory or gore or lies to get your work noticed. You don't need to hide from criticism. Your work is strong enough to speak for itself. I strongly encourage you not to abandon Hakunga. You clearly worked very hard on this. Let's go shuffle to the top of the dawn. Let's go shuffle to 